Okay, welcome to the video today. We have Jesse Coyle did a reaction video to I haven't seen it yet, I haven't watched it yet, so you're gonna be watching it with me. Maybe you've already seen it before. I have let's get into it. Jesse Coyle also in Australian Cycle is quite a fast one. Let's go. To I guess stay lean. I've got two videos here. One of them was is this one, which was from back in 2013, sort of a what I eat in a day. The other one is a more recent one from, from last year. And sexy legs there. Which cause he I mean a video from seven years ago. It seems like he's changed a little bit what he's eating. As most of you know, he's a very polarizing character, but he does have good points. Like he called out that specialized SL7 recall before anyone else did. He was also the first person I saw publicly using that sugar water thing. That's where I got the idea from, looked into it, tried it out myself, and it was awesome. Still use it to this day. So despite what you might... I stole that hack from uh, Dr. Ferrari and uh, this Dutch guy. What's his name? I forget his name. It's a Dutch name. I always forget the Dutch name. So Dutch people. Think about him. He does have some proven good points and so. And so also, the Kenyan. I used to train these Kenyan bunnies in Thailand. They would be using sugar water. They would pour sugar into a cup of tea until the spoon stood up, and then they'd stir it and just sip it, sip it like a big massive gel. And they were like so skinny, so skinny things that actually work so i think it's worth giving him time to look at through what he's doing look through what he's eating and sort of have a discussion around if that could work just a quick one a quick a quick observation jesse to me comes across like a guy who's performance driven like he's just seeing the world through objective reality versus feminine emotions or social narratives he's just thinking does this make sense or is this bs if it, if it makes sense why if I think it's BS, why? Because of what I've been told or what makes sense? So that's what I tell people is be like Jesse and develop the ability to critically think versus just blindly listen to marketing, blindly listen to someone because they're a doctor or whatever or a mechanic. Look, just, it's good to listen to people. Always listen to people, but with an, obje an objective reality versus just like, okay, okay. So that helps you develop common sense, which in today's world, as we're seeing with what's going on in current events, Common sense is very rare. Or well, maybe people have common sense, but they're scared to personify that because they fear social judgment. All right, let's get into it. If it would be appropriate to follow. So you just got out of bed, drinking some water, having a quart of water. Looking around, so I'm not sure if I should do a running race this morning. Or... I'm going to interrupt you again, but look how, look how lean I am in this one. This is before I started using performance enhancing drugs. This is back in the full Natty Bra days. I've still got that same shirt. Where is it? It's down here on the floor somewhere. And uh, I feel it out a lot more. You can see I am, in this video, maybe 62 kilos. Today, I'm about 79, so about 18 kilos of extra muscle now from using performance-enhancing drugs, mostly testosterone, Anadrol, D-Bol, uh, Winstrol, and Alexandrolo. Go out on the bike. The running race starts at 8 o'clock, so I've got an hour and a half to make up my mind. His voice has changed, and, like, he looks totally different, and his voice... That's the steroids. Steroids change your voice if you use them enough and for a long duration that's pretty crazy isn't it prescription i'm not saying people should i'm just saying this is what i've done it's definitely changed your voice this has changed so much um it's pretty pretty crazy how I many he's been using testosterone he's been public about that i think he also got something done with his teeth i think maybe he got like veneers put in because uh, his voice i got crowns done um to 2014 i did a separate video about the crowns maybe something about crowns is i had this overbite my mum was a single mum she couldn't afford braces my dental arch is like a street rat and as i got older the teeth were wearing more and more the overbite has been more pronounced so i could have got braces got my jaw broken didn't want to do that so i was in thailand got crowns done which are cap your teeth basically my bites heaps heaps better now i can enjoy carrots a lot better i also had many many cracked teeth from bike crashes street fights Sparring, sparring with friends without gloves, uh, sorry, without, without mouth garb, and uh, using cutting fishing line on my teeth. So my teeth were in a pretty bad state. Look at some of my older videos and then made bank online, crypto, YouTube, rest is history. Saw one of the best celebrity dentists in Bangkok and had a, it was a massive line, had a, a huge queue. Uh, had to wait a long time to get it done. As of any dentist, they're always booked out in advance. So yeah, that's why I got crowns done primarily for bite and aesthetics and to protect the broken teeth from fights, etc. Voice has changed a lot and I think it's, it's I mean, maybe he got 
a crown put in or something because his voice changing that much wouldn't just be from the test. It must be. No, it's definitely from the test. Microphone as well is different, but you look at my phone videos, the voice has changed massively. Um, yeah, some sort of dental thing, but it's, it's totally different person going back and watching these videos. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's been, maybe it's a bit cold for writing. But he was actually leaner back back here. So actually, what, whatever he was eating and doing here made him get skinnier and leaner. So we can maybe we can read into that a little bit as well. What's that little, what's that little escapade doing in there? Let's put these dates in the back of my jersey. What's this guy going on? It's like, that's a funny looking date, isn't it? It's a funny looking date. Hey, come on, little buddy. So he just wants to... He just wants to... Come on. Go on. I'm sorry, that is, that's disgusting. I freak out if there was a cockroach in my food. That's, it's rushing up against all that. Jesse, don't watch my video where I put a cockroach in my mouth. Don't watch that video. Ugh, that, that is foul. <laughs> Fuck. It's a tight with legs. Come on, little buddy. You can, you can go outside, come on. For a ride, actually, I'm going to smash down a little water. Always when you... Okay, so now he's back from the ride. He's going to have some water. So essentially, it looks like all he had was dates. Uh, dates and water before the ride. So, I mean... That, that's correct. I always... I never, ever, ever, ever train fasted. I always bring some food with me. If I run out of food, I'll go get food on the ride. Even if I have to just go to a cafe and get sugar. I just, you know, steal a bunch of sugars and put them in my water bottle. I never train fasted. Just drops your mood. Spikes your TSH levels. It just your performance is down. It's just like ugh. never. I never ever train fast. It's the worst thing. It just sets the mood up for a bad mood later in the day. You get more snippy and bitchy and blah, blah, blah. I love feeling energized and always having reserves, like deep reserves left. For no, no matter whatever's going to happen in the day, I always want to have reserves. I mean that seems fine to me. Carbohydrate source would be dates can be pretty filling. He doesn't actually train that much. I'm guessing maybe he went for a, out for an hour, hour and a half ride. Um, because it was this was in winter, so it looks pretty cold. So that seems fine to me. Some dates before a ride, good carb source, keep you full, keep your stomach settled. Wake up, smash down a little water, come back from training or whatever, smash down a little water. I'm gonna have this drink of water before my banana smoothie. If you're thirsty after a meal, you didn't drink enough water before that meal. I mean, the, the chugging the water seems a bit excessive. I mean, it's good to be hydrated, but. Most of this water is just going to be pissing out, which, again, is fine. It's not doing any harm just pissing out clear water, but could he have had half? If, if, if it's in winter, he's gone out for a short ride. Could he have had half this and still be the same level of hydration? Probably. Um, I would just find this extremely inconvenient to be constantly running to the toilet to go to piss. So I try and piss every two hours when on the bike and always aiming clear, clear water, clear on. I don't think this was in winter. I mean, it could have been, but I doubt it. Because the date was November 11th. It's November... Wow. It's November 11th today. That's crazy. This is... Was this eight years ago to the day? That's spooky. Today's quite cold. We're here in Adelaide, Australia. And it's about five degrees up in Mount Lofty. So, yeah. I'm, and I'm drinking water today as well. Every I'm drinking enough water so I'm peeing every two hours. That's my goal. And during the day. Always productive. Or feeling good. I get the message... Uh, seems a little bit unnecessary from my point of view, especially in the cold. That's not a sign you're hydrated. <coughs> As you can smash down a quart. It's a massive blender full of sugar and bananas. I think he talks about it in a sec. Around 100 grams sugar. Ow! So we have here about 22 bananas, around 100 grams sugar, and a big handful, about 100 grams of dried fruit straps from fruit wines. So yeah. That's why I laugh when people say, Sugar makes you fat. Fruit makes you fat. Look how lean I am in this video. Like, I am looking like... There's no way any police officer in Australia wouldn't think I'm a serious meth addict. Like, you can see my... Just, I'm so... I'm still... My body fat's the same today. But back then, I have more muscle now from the steroids. But, you know, that's why I just laugh, man. It's like, man, you have no idea. If I never use steroids... I'll probably be 59 kilos right now. <laughs> yeah, people, people be concerned. I'm like, dude, you know. That's why I just, I just roll my eyes when people say, oh, sugar makes you fat. Rice makes you fat. Fruit makes you fat. I hardly train. You know, in January, I might bang out some Ks. The rest of the year, I'm, I'm a lazy trainer. I'm not a star athlete or someone who's... I'm not dedicated like that. Like, I use my bike for commuting. 
I just rode, I rode, today I rode 8Ks on the e-bike, and that's all I'm doing today. You know, like, just baffles me when people say certain things over the last decade or 22 decades. It's, oh, cars make you fat. It's like, oh my God. That's why you're fat, people. Those people, because you believe the wrong things. S.A. dried fruit, people. So that's about 350 calories. The fruit syrups, about 140 calories. The, around 20... Around 28, 2900 calories for this one. All right, so I guess a couple of talking points about this. The first thing, I guess, is how can you eat this much carbs and not get fat? Which is probably <laughs> the most basic question. But then people bring up, well, isn't this much sugar going to give you diabetes? That sort of thing. So I would say, in terms of getting fat, the reason why this diet works for him is because he keeps his fat very low. Think about it this way. If you were carb loading for a race and you do two or three days... In massively increasing your carb load, you don't get fat. Where does that carbs go when you eat it? It's primarily stored as glycogen. That's the first place that carbs are stored. So essentially, excess carbohydrates firstly will be stored as glycogen. So there's that pathway there. If you do manage to eat more than that and saturate that, which is already, the, the body has massive um, capacity for glycogen storage. If you do manage to overeat on carbs above that, the process of converting dietary carbohydrates to fat is called de novo lipogenesis. You can look that up. And that process of converting dietary carbohydrates to stored body fat is not very efficient. It's only about 75% efficient. So to actually convert dietary carbohydrate to stored body fat, it costs the body a lot of energy. So even if you do manage to get that stage, you're still, burn, you're still increasing your energy expenditure to do that process. Dietary fat, on the other hand, isn't the same. Converting dietary fat to stored body fat is almost 100% efficient. So... There's no energy burn to actually do that. So essentially what I'm getting at here is your capacity for dealing with large amounts of carbohydrates in the body is quite good. You've got your glycogen storage, you've then got the process of converting it to body fat if need be, which is already extremely inefficient, which is a good thing for us because it burns more energy. So essentially that can work really well. That's why he can eat a heap of carbs and not get fat. The place where this breaks down is... So everyone can eat a lot of carbs and not get fat. It's when people add fat. Regardless if you're just eating a pure 100% fat diet or not, every gram of fat you eat, you store as fat. So if you're eating, it's irrelevant to if someone's eating a thousand grams of carbs a day. You know it's, that's irrelevant because if, if you're eating 100 grams of fat a day with that, you're storing 100 grams of fat. If you're eating all you're eating in a day is 100 grams of fat, you're storing 100 grams of fat. All right, the fat we eat is the fat we wear, and the human body has an unlimited capacity to store fat. That's why you can be a 600 pound person. 600 pounder, all right? That's, anyone, anyone can be a 600 pounder. That's the reality. But eating more carbs than you need is near impossible in a day. Because you're like, oh man, I'm, I, I can't, now I'm done. I'm just like, oh, tapping out, please, tapping out. And when, when I mean carbohydrate, I mean refined sugar, white rice, uh, corn, fruits, potatoes. I'm not talking donuts and fatty things like that where they get most of the calories from fat or a lot of fat. You know what I mean? But then people eat the donuts, have you know 2,000 calories a day from donuts, 3,000 calories a day from donuts, and they get maybe 100, 200 grams of fat with that. And then they're blaming the sugar for the fat stores. It's like, no, 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 no. You had fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. All right? It's not, it's not like you got to choose fat or you got to choose sugar. You have to choose sugar. If you choose fat, you're storing the fat, people. You're storing the fat. Every gram of fat you eat is the fat you wear. You're storing that. So unless you're in a fat deficit, eating all this dietary fat, you're just going to store, 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 like keep it on. It's going to keep piling on. So you store the fat, then you've got to burn it off. If you don't burn the fat off, it just stays and stays forever. You can, you can eat fat as an eight-year-old and not burn it off until you're 80, literally. That fat will just stay there, dormant, like money in the bank, metabolic money in the bank, that fat. So to tap into that, stop eating so much fat. Keep your fat under 10 grams a day so your body can tap into those fat reserves and bang, you'll be looking like a six foot emaciated tapeworm with HIV like me. <laughs> if he eats too much fat. Now this only works if you're eating low fat because if you're eating this diet with this amount of carbs and you eat too much fat, you're... you're... Too much fat's always too much fat, for sure. Too much fat's always too much fat when it comes to storing as fat. If the goal is to lose fat, more than 10 grams a day of fat, in my opinion, my experience training thousands of people the last 25 years, more than 10 grams of fat a day, if you're trying to lose fat, it's like... It's like trying to clean your computer. It's trying to like trying to clean scratches off your computer screen with sandpaper, like grit sandpaper. It's not gonna. It's not working. 
you're quite screwed because your fat oxidation isn't very good and that excess fat you're eating is going to be stored as fat. So for this to work, you have to keep your dietary fat low. So I think Harley says... He to have low body fat is always going to make sense to keep fat low, for sure. He keeps his fat, tries to keep his fat, if he's trying to stay lean, under 20 grams of fat a day, which is very low. So what will happen is, let's say you're doing this diet and two or three days a week you slip up and you eat foods that are way too high in fat, that compounds and you have your body has no way to process that and it's going to store it as fat. So basically... The body always stores it as fat. This works very well. Regardless of your diet choices. The fat we eat is the fat we store, the fat we wear. In and of its own, but there's not much margin for error in terms of diet. Now for me, I wouldn't want to eat like this. Um, I fat, Fatty foods taste good. I that, and see, this, this, is, this is what I like about Jesse. He's just honest. Yeah, he's just honest by saying, I wouldn't want to eat like this because I like eating fatty foods. Like, he's just honest. He's not going to say, oh, blah, blah, blah. He's just going to say, I wouldn't want to do it. You know what I mean? That's great. So many people I've coached over the years are like, oh, Harley, I'm, I'm doing what you're saying, but I'm not losing any weight. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You know, or maybe I know one of their family members or I'll, I'll see him at a certain restaurant or see him out in the supermarket with shopping with stuff and I'll, I'll just ignore him, pretend I didn't see him. You know, look in the trolley, you know. I'll see what's going on. Like, so people, rather than, then people say, oh, I'm not losing any weight, what should I do? And I'm like, you should do what I've told you to do. You should do what you know to do, what I've told you. You know, they, 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 they say, oh, I'm doing it, but I'm not getting any results. It's like, you're not. Because they want me to tell them something different. They want me to say, oh, no, it doesn't work for you. It does work for you. You just got to do it, peeps. You just got to do it. You know, the fat we eat is the fat we wear. I would rather have a more targeted approach where I'm eating high amounts of carbohydrates at specific times around training than just eating a normal mixed diet at other times that allows that gives me that breathing room that if I do happen to eat uh, a higher fat meal, if I'm busy at work and I ran out of time, I go. Yeah, so Jesse's, just, Jesse's choosing his own adventure like there. He's got Rebel Whopper, for sure. Rebel Whopper's, Rebel Whopper's uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're good. They're, they're tasty, but they are fatty. Go up and get a rebel whopper from Hungry Jacks. I don't want that hungry. I don't want that meal to completely throw off my diet and um, cause body fat storage, which it would if you're eating this. It's always going to store, Jesse. It's always going to store as fat. All right. It's just that, yeah, it's always going to store as fat. Huge amount. Of and hey, Jesse's a really lean guy. I mean, yeah, it, like Jesse doesn't need to lose any fat. This dude's already super, super lean. Okay, like so, someone like Jesse, I would say, unless he was like going for the Tour de France win. Why, why would he want to eat less fat? You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's not saying he's got any insulin issues. He's not saying he's got any breathing issues. For me, with allergies and stuff, I definitely find being strict with fat really, really, really helps my breathing. And so someone like Jesse, who's just like, you know, a gun athlete, already super lean, you know, like, he's probably experimented with eating less fat and he maybe hasn't found any real benefit to it because he's already lean enough. So why would someone like Jesse really want to push the fat even lower when he's already, you know, Tour de France winning lean? See what I mean? But if someone's like not looking like me or Jesse and someone's looking like, you know, like normal and they want to lose body fat, then they're going to benefit massively from cutting that fat right down to 10 grams a day. A carbohydrate. So scientifically, there is a basis for it and there is a reason why it works to keep you lean. But you do have to really stay in those guardrails and that's kind of what I don't like. And personally, this food he's eating, I, I mean, a massive banana smoothie doesn't sound that appealing to me. I that's what I mean. So Jesse's being straight away honest. You know, this, I love it. I love it. I want to say though, Jesse, if, if I did make this smoothie for you, I'd be, I'd be surprised if you didn't like it. How I make my smoothies, I use a pulse blend. It's less oxidization, tastes creamy and smoothier. I'd be surprised if you didn't like it. I've never had anyone not like my banana smoothie. But I've, ma I've, had, I've tried other people's banana smoothies and I'm like, oh man, what is this? What, this is not a banana smoothie, man. This is like, man, I can understand why people don't like bananas. So I've got a, you know, I've made a, few thousand of banana smoothies and I'd say I'm one of the best banana smoothie makers in the world the pulse technique makes such a difference I don't really like dates um, yeah that, that really low fat most dates don't taste that good you gotta have the, the good ones that thing I don't really like so that's an explanation of the fat loss side of things and how he can stay lean doing this that's how it works and there's a good man that's why it works there's a scientific what a legend yeah you know, Jesse's agreeing with it but he's also saying, I wouldn't want to do it. Okay? That's not appealing to me. You know what I mean? I wish we had more people like Jesse in the world. That sounds cool, Harley. You're doing that. It looks like, it, I can understand why it works. I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? That's just great. Versus just writing it off because that's, you know, Jesse, mate. Thumbs up, mate. Thumbs up. Explanation for that. 
Let's see what else he's eating. Um, go to the evening. Okay, so he's having a big bowl of rice with some, looks like some curry on top. That works. Huge amount of carbs. Glycogen is going to be stocked up. The chance that he's actually overeating at this level is pretty low. The, the amount of carbohydrates you have to eat to over to the to the point where your glycogen stores are saturated and you're going to into that pathway where you're converting dietary carbohydrates to fat is extremely high. It's yeah, it's like man, you, you have to be like a champion eater. Like you know, you have to just really force it in like every single meal for like weeks and weeks and weeks before you're converting maybe a single gram to fat over time. You know, and what people is that people make the mistake like, oh no no, I did a bikini competition, I did a bodybuilding competition, I was eating a thousand calories a day, I was in clean butyrol, and you know like, and then I started since I started eating food after the, after the comp, I started like just getting all this jiggly 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 on my belly. It's like yeah, that's like fluid retention, that's edema because your potassium and sodium intake was just so low, and your carb intake was so low, your aldosterone levels were just so tweaked, and then you start eating. You know, normal amount of calories again, two, three, four, five thousand calories a day, and then your body's like boom, just holds the water like a sponge, and you mistake that for fat gain. It's not fat gain, it's your body's starting to hydrate again, yeah, our dosterone levels are starting to adapt again. You know, but people just jump on a scale and see an extra two kilos up, they go, oh, it's fat, it's fat, it's fat. You know, it's not fat. It's most of the time just water weight, water retention, glycogen, things like that. So but yeah, people don't understand that, and then they just they just think the scales is means going up means it must be fat, and then they they eating disorder patterns, the binge purge, the cut bulk just starts and starts again. And for most people, they never unfortunately they never escape that carousel of binge purge, cut bulk, starve binge, blah 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 blah, for life. And, and in the meantime, their moods is up and down, up and down, stimulant dependence, drug dependence. It's just psychological issues. It's just they're hard to be around, unfortunately very difficult to eat that much but as i said it's very easy to trip yourself up if you're eating too much fat when you're doing this and you'll it, and, it, and it won't work so let's go to the more again too much fat is for most people it's gonna be 10 grams a day depending unless they're lean and then it's gonna be not so much of an issue unless you've got breathing issues like i, I can get uh with cat fur and stuff like that recent one and see what he's eating this was last year day in the off season this is where i think he was doing his and he's still doing it, i think where he's trying to bulk up a bit so let's play it through. We've got Natasha here buying some ice. Damn, that's a some that's a that's a rig right there, isn't it? Ice cream. <laughs> um, when, when Natasha goes to the supermarket, uh, you know, I I could be naked and no one would notice me. It's all eyes on Natasha, and we can understand why. Just doing banana smooth. I'm putting some bananas. Put a bit of creatine in there. You don't need that. <laughs> Just doing it. You need to... Creatine, good for cycling if you're only racing on the flat and you want to get stronger. If you are vegan or plant-based as well, it may have additional benefits because naturally your creatine levels can drop off. So if you want to be a good sprinter and you don't care much about going uphill, creatine being a good supplement to try out. So he's making... I think, yeah, I think... Uh, I see what Jesse's going with the vegan vegetarian thing of creatine. Uh, I disagree. I think people should just try it, whatever diet they're on, and see what they think. And see what they think. So, for me, creatine helps add more weight to the body. It helps with the steroids as well. The steroids hold even more creatine in the muscle. Um, but yeah, creatine is one of the most popular and safe supplements out there, used by vegans, vegetarians, meat eaters, used by pretty much everyone. Um, it's fake natties, natties, unnatties. It's a very, very popular supplement. So I think, yeah, you could try it out, people, and see what you think. If it makes you feel better, Use it. If not, eh, it's very, very safe. A smoothie here, creatine, bananas, and it looks like some sugar as well. You do need sugar, right? You do need sugar. You do need fruit. I also put in some pea protein. You don't need that. I just put it in there. Okay, so he's putting protein in this one because I think back in the day, six or seven years ago, he was very keeping a protein very low. And that was another thing I bring up following this is... If you're a cyclist, you're not doing strength training, you're just riding your bike, you want to be very fit on the bike, very lean, very skinny, you don't need much protein. Like you can be on the lower end of the protein recommendations per day, so you might aim for 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Or less. I mean, I would say 30 grams a day, 20 grams a day. You know, the goal, the goal if you're a cyclist or runner and you want to PR, you basically got to be your skinniest without being, you know, 
too skinny. You want to have super, super skinny. Maybe girlfriend finds you very unattractive with a super high hemoglobin level. That's, you know, that's now you're talking as a runner, cyclist. So unattractive to women as a guy and with a stupidly high hemoglobin level or high normal hemoglobin level and that recipe there, whoosh, now you're on a winner. There you go. So just to say it again, you know you're at your peak as a cyclist when your woman in your life or women in your life go, Ooh, you know, you're looking a bit skinny. Um, cool. And your hemoglobin is like 150, 160, 170, 180, 190. And then now you're, now you're going to be in PR territory, assuming you've been doing the training. Day of protein, which is quite low, quite easy to get. I'd say for this diet though, where you would come undone is if you're doing regular strength training or if you're not cycling, if you're doing more of a strength-based sport, you're going to want to get more protein in, probably closer to 1.5, 1.6 grams uh, of protein per kilo of body weight. And in that case, you're probably going to need more than just banana smoothies and rice. For sure. Otherwise, yeah, let, 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 Jesse's right. Let's say you're, let's say you're heavyweight boxer, right? You're, you're 120 kilos. You've got fat. You got muscle. You just, you're just a brick shit house. Eating like me is going to lean you out. You're going to lose so much fat. You're going to maintain muscle because you're probably going to be at steroids of that weight and, and heavyweight, like most people are. But you're going to lean out. You're going to drop to like a 90 kg lean. Lean, 90 kilo, ripped, shredded, sort of Chris Hemsworth style thing. Um, that's what's going to happen. You know, so yeah, it depends what your weight's at. But most cyclists are trying to get oh, twiggy, twiggy, twink. And then, uh, yeah. Some dates. And uh, carbs. We all, you always need carbs. So you do need sugar. You do need fruit. You do need rice. You don't. This is optional stuff. So the other thing that comes up a lot is well if i'm eating this much sugar okay i might not get fat but when i get diabetes and no that won't happen the biggest risk factors for diabetes is being overweight having excess body fat which he doesn't have and simply eating high amounts of carbs and spiking your blood sugar isn't going to give you diabetes you're going to get diabetes through insulin resistance through being overweight and simply spiking your blood sugar or eating a lot of carbs that's not the cause of diabetes so it doesn't need to be worried about that train a road if you actually a lot of people do ask like, oh, I want to fuel my training, but I'm kind of worried eating, like drinking that much sugar. Like, is that going to be bad for my health? Am I going to get diabetes? Trainer Road actually have come around and they've done a really good podcast on it. I'll link that podcast down below. If you're interested in the interaction between having a high carbohydrate diet as an athlete and you're potentially worried about getting diabetes, definitely worth a listen. Uh, link below. They go into a lot more detail on that. The cause, of, the cause of type 2 diabetes is type 1, type 2, type 1.5, type 3, but the main one are type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is where you, you have an immune system response, it's immunosuppressive sort of disease going on there where your pancreas isn't really producing enough insulin for what you need or it's to stop producing it at all. So that's generally like a, more of a, a, an illness you get. You know, it could very be very genetic. It could be related to dairy allergies. A lot of kids having dairy issues can get type 1. That's a whole separate thing, but... Just watch my videos, people, interviewing type 1 diabetes. Just type in Duran Rider, type 1 diabetes. You'll see interviews with Ben, who's a type 1, and Robbie Barbaro, who's a type 1. Being up with the type 2 diabetes, where it's insulin resistance, insulin resistance, that's from eating too much fat. So once your fat intake goes over 20, 30, 40, 50 grams a day, for most people, unless they're really doing a lot of sport, their insulin resistance is going to go up because the fat... They're eating that dietary fat is going to coat the insulin receptor site, and so then the sugar can't enter the cell. It's like this microphone here. If I take off the windsock, the the fat is the the fat is the windsock. All right, it's coating the microphone, which is my cell, and so this is sugar. Sugar's going trying to go in the cell, but it's hitting hitting the fat, and it can't go in. So then the blood sugar's going up, and the body's going, hey man, more insulin, more insulin. So insulin's going up, your blood sugar's going up, and with the insulin going up, that's more inflammation damage to endothelium cells, damage to heart tissue, just damage all around. And what they people the mistake is, oh, your blood sugar's up, must be sugar's the problem. No, 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 no. Take the windsock off, take the fat off the cell by eating less fat in your diet under 10 grams a day. That fat eventually dissipates, gets passed through the bloodstream and stored. And then you can your sugar can enter the cell properly because the fat is off the insulin receptor site. The fat on the insulin receptor site is called insulin, insulin uh, resistance. Insulin resistance. When the fat goes off of the cell, that's insulin sensitivity. So if your cells don't have much fat on them, that's insulin sensitivity. That's going up. That's good. If you're eating 
oily food, avocado, bacon, fatty foods, then that's just sticking to insulin receptor site. That's called insulin resistance. Even if you're an athlete, it will still happen, but exercise just passes the blood through and just sort of rubs the fat off and it just you're digesting it, you're metabolizing it better. But you could still give yourself diabetes by having two, 300 grams of fat in a day for a couple of days and testing your you know, your old glucose tolerance test. And even most athletes will start to be a bit insulin resistant. Insulin resistant. So, yeah, just because someone's skinny and lean doesn't mean they can't have type 2 diabetes. It'll be harder for them, but it's still possible. But type 2 diabetes, as I've coached you know, many, many type 2s over the last 20 years, is, is temporary. Type 2 diabetes is based on how much fat you're eating. So if the person stops eating the fat, and keeps under 10 grams a day, magically that type 2 diabetes just goes away. Type 2 diabetes is purely diet driven. All right? Take them off the, low, off the high fat stuff, put them under 10 grams a day, get them to do some cycling or some walking to speed up that shedding of the fat off the cell, the insulin receptor site, boom, every single time. In as little as two days, I've seen type 2 diabetes just go, bye-bye. And then they go to the doctor, and the doctor's like, I don't know what you're doing, but just keep doing it, because you're no longer diabetic. You don't need this metformin. You don't need the blah, blah, blah. And diabetics are the best to work with because they're testing their sugars multiple times a day. So they see the improvements so quickly, and they're like, why didn't anyone tell me this? I've been taking this diabetes medication that makes my dog not work properly, you know, and now I'm off, and now I'm good, and now I'm hard, my wife's happy, my girlfriend's happy, my side chick's happy. Durin Rider, thank you very much. It's that simple. But again, most people don't want to change their diet. We had Bert Newton recently, lost a leg, and then he lost his life, unfortunately. Bert Newton's TV celebrity star, icon. Didn't want to give up his fatty diet, and that took his life, unfortunately. But you can see how much time this. Four dates. So a ginger beer he had. Cliff bar. Four dates, a, a cliff bar. Right here. Just chuck him through that. It's a good little snack. Beetroot. Beetroot. And got one of these. And I'm going to try these little things out as well. And uh, got a bit of got a bit on sale, a bit of protein. Goal in January for me is add weight to the body. Because there's going to be a cereal there so you can sort of see the... the right, so he's, ma he's making up his cereal. This catalog sustain, a bit of almond milk on there as well. Almond milk, I would recommend, if possible, soy milk. It's higher in protein. Um, if you're having milk, you may as well get a bit more protein in. Almond milk. Again, again, it depends on what your goal is. Now, now, you know, back in my lean days, I just use water. <laughs> if you're, if you want to lose weight, just use water. Don't use any soy milk, any almond milk. No, 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 nothing. Just use water on your cereal with sugar. Much sugar as you want, much cereal as you want. Not toasted, oily cereal like this. Kellogg sustains very low fat, and water. Just use water. Now though, I'm using the high protein stuff because I want to gain more weight. We want to go up to 90 kilo during rider. All right, so I know what it's like to be 60 kilos, 59 kilos. That's good, cool. 67 kilo during rider, 70 kilo, 75, 80 kilo. We were, we're going to go up to 90 kg. It, can I get there? I mean, sure, if I smashed the fat and became a fat dude, but I don't want to do that. Um, so we're going to go lean 90 kilo during rider. It's going to take time, but uh, it'll happen. And I'm in increasing the protein. And with the steroids that I've been using, the anabolic prescription steroids, testosterone, etc., that helps that protein absorption, turn it into muscle, bang. And that's why I look so much different than I used to. I mean, this one, the inner goodness, I think that's the one from Aldi. So it will be fortified with calcium, which is good. But if you're having milk, I prefer like a Vitasoy, the, the light one, higher in protein, lower in fat. Um, and I think tastes better. I don't really like almond milk, but sort of personal preference there. But yeah, just be careful if you are doing these plant-based milks that you're looking for one that has is higher in protein and is fortified with calcium. Just not too much sugar now. It's just that, that's enough. Just kidding. You don't have hot girlfriends if you're a beta. Alpha is sugar. That is true. This this is this is with uh you know those little things people go, you troll and this is true, man. If you look at the girlfriends I've had over the last decade, they are sexy hot women. You know what I mean? Sexy hot women. Natasha, Tori, Freely other women in my life, uh, but my main girlfriends, the one, the living girls I have here, yeah, they're high value, uh, high sexual market value, high SMV girls, you know, they they wouldn't look out of place in a modeling competition, Victoria's Secret back in the day, or a Formula One good girl, they wouldn't look out of place at all, they wouldn't look out of place as cycling sports models, and to maintain something like that in your life, 
you know, you got to have energy. Because these women are used to like, go, 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 go. They're used to really charismatic guys because they get the attention. They walk into the club or the modeling school and then all the guys are just like, bam, you know, onto them. So these, these women are used to just a, a strong, masculine presence, all right? So if you're the boyfriend and you can't give them that strong, masculine presence with sincerity, etc., that they're used to and they crave and they want and they need, all of a sudden these women who are used to it get really, really bored. Like I'm... You know, with my status, etc. You know, um, you know the status. You're just a child doing it. <laughs> with my stat, with my position on social media, troll or guru, or whatever you want to call me, cult, cult member or cult leader or cult follower, whatever. I have been fortunate enough with women, so I'm used to women giving me what I want. You know, and I'm they're used to me giving them what they want: attention, masculine presence, you know, daddy's girth, etc. So if I don't get that, I'm like, hmm, where's this relationship going? Same with the girls. If they don't get what they want, they're like, hmm, where's this relationship going? You know, I feel bored. I'm not getting the attention I want. The hotter the chick, the more attention they need because they're used to that. And something doesn't feel right in their DNA if they're getting less attention. That's why a lot of women, as they hit a certain age in life, or they become a mom or whatever, they're getting less attention from what they're used to. It can be very, very hard for them to adapt to that. Same with like professional athletes, so, so like Lance Armstrong. Attention, praise, praise, and all of a sudden becomes like a, a social pariah for some people. That's very hard to deal with, but Lance took it in his stride because he's a champ. So that's another thing as well. The carbohydrate intake keeps your serotonin solid, keeps your dopamine solid. People are going to cocaine for dopamine, caffeine for dopamine, stupid stuff for dopamine. Always go to sugar for dopamine, carbohydrate for dopamine, contribution, productivity, giving your girl or your guy or whatever you're into, that your person in your life, giving them your passion, persistence, you know, no resistance, things like that. Being the partner of their dreams and you have the partner of your dreams. You're given to them, they're given to you. It's that teamwork, they know you're giving your, your best, they're going to give you your best back. You know, like I feel obligated. Natasha's given me her primest, best years of her life. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to like give her like poor quality attention and poor quality sex or whatever. No, no, no. I'm going to give her the best because she deserves it. She's given to me and we give to each other. And it's like you've got two people giving to each other. It's like you're doing a two-man time trial, two-person time trial. You're just banging out the watts and, you know, sometimes you're a little bit slower. And the other person, I'll take up the slack. And then some days you're not having the best time. I'll take up the slack. And you that teamwork. You're just smashing through life, swapping off turns. No one's sitting on because they're bonking on out of carbs. They're like, boom, let's go. Sugar, water, rest, sleep, let's rock and roll. That's the passion in life. If you have passion in life, man... You're always, there always, always, there's always room for people in life who have passion and energy and really want to make a difference in life. There's always room for people like that. If you want to be a rainbow, there's always room for rainbows. And if you're a sustained rainbow, obviously you sleep at night and you rest, you charge, you come back next day. No one's full gas 24-7. But if it's something important in your life, being able to go full gas to win up the climb in life, in the sprint in life, you know what I mean? Sometimes you get caught behind the team car. You've got to go around it in life and just boom. Sometimes you get a flat in life. You've got to fix your own flat, keep going. Sometimes the bunch wants to drop you. You've got to fight the bunch. It's just, if you don't have enough carbohydrate because you fear carbs, people, you fear sugar, you fear fruit, you fear white rice, boom, you just instantly cut. And I can, I'm, I'm, I know because I was that guy who really struggled with women back in the day. I was shy, I was undercarbed, I was like, you know, just, oh, honey, he's just a cute boy, blah, blah, blah. And then I became something else and you know, went through some trials and tribulations and learned a lot, made them a lot of mistakes and learned a lot. But I can say 100% carbohydrate, that's your foundation, your sleep, water, sugar, man. So many guys can't handle women because they're undercarbed, man. Like good looking, strong, sexy, stripper type, Chris Hemsworth esque guys cut their carbs or whatever and then they can't handle the women the women's just like man you're like you look so good but now you're being so beat at Blah. for a woman there's nothing less attractive than the guy who loses his confidence who loses his masculine presence money age looks those things come and go masculine presence that's what that's every man's right and every woman craves that they crave that at a dna level and i don't make the rules that's just biology men crave feminine presence because that was what they got as a kid that made them feel loved and protected from their mom women, girls, young girls, they feel masculine presence from their dad or father figures in their life makes them feel safe from the tigers and lions and other creepy callies out there. So as humans, we need that masculine presence. We need the feminine presence. All right? And that that's 
underpinned on muscle glycogen. You go and run a marathon, and you where well, you bonk. I'm not talking sex bonk. I'm talking like you're running out of muscle glycogen. You're all dizzy. You're woozy. You can't push 100 watts. You're, you're a three minute K runner. You go down to six minute Ks, and you're just like hobbling along. How much presence, feminine presence, or masculine presence can you give in that moment? Pretty much zero. You're flaky. You're a pushover. Blah. You're unattractive in that moment. You're like, what are you doing? You're like this gun athlete. Now you're just like flopping around at 100 watts. What's going on with you? And that's like in the relationship with people. Like you're this sexy woman or sexy guy or whatever. People seeing you, they love you, they respect you, they have desire for you. And then you know, now you're unconfident because you're under carb, you're getting hangry and moody and flipping around. People are like, what's going on here? It's like jumping on a bike that is stiff and rigid and responsive and the brakes work perfect. And all of a sudden you're going up the climb trying to push watts and the bike turns into this like flexy, Tarmac SL7 rubbing rotors, squishy down tube. You know, what is this piece of junk? Oh, I want that stiff SL4 tarmac Christmas, man. That's always on top of the carbs. Always on top of the carbs. Otherwise, life gets harder than it has to be. Life's so hard as it is, people. Life's so hard as it is. Why make it harder by fearing the carbs or feeling guilty for getting the sleep you need? You know, or feeling, oh, I want to drink water, but I don't want to inconvenience my workmates by going to the toilet again. People are going to have a cigarette again. You can go to the toilet and have a piss. You know what I mean? If anyone's got a problem with it, just say, I just got a bladder problem. The doctor said I got to go to the toilet. Sorry. You know, tell the NPCs whatever they want to hear, whatever's going to make them happy. Tell them. There we go. So again, this, as I kind of said before, this diet works. There is a scientific basis for why eating like this can keep you lean. My problem I have again, firstly, um, I mean, this looks, I could have, you know, a bowl of cereal. I mean, I eat cereal, but it's, it's the other stuff. Now he's eating a bit more fat here. So actually this, this food he's eating here where he had the, he had the shake with the protein powder. He had like the plant-based chicken strip things. Um, he had a little cookie. Like that, this sort of stuff looks more like a regular diet that I'd want to eat. Um, but still, if, if, he, if he was only doing these super high carb, very low fat days, this is where I'd come unstuck because I don't want to eat like this. I probably prefer a more mixed approach, slightly reducing the carbohydrates at non-training time. So again, not, I'm not saying restricted carbohydrates. I still eat a relatively high carbohydrate diet, but just, just not dumping the sugar in. And then, because if you're dumping all these carbs in, you're then having to restrict the fat more. Whereas I know- You always have to restrict the fat if the goal is weight loss. The goal, if the goal is weight loss, the fat, I should say fat loss, because weight, what does weight mean? If the goal is fat loss, enhanced blood flow, oxygen transfer, uptake and delivery, the, the fat has to go from the diet. I tell people, everybody in their life should do a month, a 30 day challenge where they cut their fat under 10 grams a day. And just, as, so if you're a cyclist with a power meter, you know, man, you're going to notice some changes. If you've got, if you've got asthma, if you've got diabetes type two or type one, you're going to notice profound changes. Now, for some, the main negative, though, is some people are going to lose so much body fat, that could be an issue. If you're a girl, you might lose your boobs. If you're a guy, you just might get, like, so shredded, people are like, hmm, you're looking a bit too skinny, blah, 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 too lean, you're too shredded. So, it, again, depends on the person, but I think just a month's okay. Unless you're underweight, then don't do that. But, you know, for most people doing this experiment, just 30 days, that's good enough to get a go, wow, mm, now I can see what Duranod is on about. So, if you want to lose fat, Cut the fat under 10 grams a day. If you've got type 2 diabetes, do the fat under 10 grams a day. Just do the experiment. You know what I mean? You measure in your bloods, you notice a big difference. Blood sugars, you'll notice a huge difference in insulin resistance. Huge difference. Oh, I prefer my diet to be a bit more mixed. I like the taste of fatty foods. I like to be able to eat them. It's just a part of my diet. So, Jesse's, you know what I mean? Raff, he's wearing a raffer top. Jesse's one of the good raffer wearers. You know? He's one of the good raffer wearers. I was talking to a Tour de France winner a couple of years ago at Norton Summit. He was, I won't mention his name because he probably doesn't want to get involved, but he was saying to me, how are you so lean? You know, I'm, out, I'm like, smash the carbs. He goes, yeah, I've seen your YouTube videos, but man, I, like, I love my fatty stuff. I couldn't do that. You know, And this is a guy, Tour de France winner, big name, super, super talent, all right? Super talent. And I, I remember saying to me, if you ate... You know, if we could do a body swap and I could hand you back in like a, just a month or two months, you know, you'd, you'd be impressed. And he's like, eh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that, you know. I wish we could do that. I wish, we could do, I wish I could swap bodies with some people. Imagine that. I'd, I'd do a body swap with someone and that, that'd hand me back obese and burnt out and like moody. 
and I'd hand them their new body of just like super ripped Tour de France winning level, body fat levels of high VO2 max and feeling good and, you know, stable. And they'd be like, man, this is, this is, this is, this is onto it. This is onto it. It's just like tuning a bike. You know, I see people with gears and the gears are like chopping around, the, the cable housing shredded through, the, 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 there's like rust on the cable, the derailleur the derailleur hangers bent, and the gears are clicking. And I'm like, man, I can I could bling your bike up in like 10, 20 minutes, man. And and they're like, oh no, I don't know, I'm, I don't know. Like the bike shop said it's okay. And I'm like, oh, the bike shop doesn't know what they're like. You know, just give me your bike, let me do it. You know, and people, are like, oh, I don't know about you doing it. I don't know if I can trust you. And I said, dude, I'm gonna get your mechanic, your bike dialed, man, absolutely dialed. And like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know. And so that level of resistance, that always, I'm just like, man, if only I could. You know, and I've, I've trained people's bikes before, like, man, you, you're a good bike mechanic, Drew and I, you know. When it comes to gears, you know, one of my faves now. Um, because I was so bad at doing gears, you know, and I was so bad at doing gears for so long, and I was like, I'm going to learn how to be a master at gears, absolute master. Because I was sick of paying for jobs that weren't that good, you know. So I thought, I've got to do it myself. If you want something done right, do it yourself. Same with nutrition. But to do that, you're going to need to reduce the carbohydrates a bit. Um, so I wouldn't do this full carb dump. But that's not to say it doesn't work. If you want to follow the diet, I would say there's a scientific basis for why it does work, as I explained earlier. Sauces, you've got this is a bit of your barbecue sauce. This is the first bowl. So this is rice, vegan chicken stuff, and barbecue sauce. I mean, this looks kind of gross. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'd want to eat this. Um, Maybe if this was into more like a stir fry with a proper, some vegetables, probably. So this is, I love this guy. You know what I mean? Like, I love it. Like again, for most people, this looks like <laughs> this looks like dog food, man. This looks like prison food. But to be honest, this is my this is my absolute favorite food. White rice with some some vegetables on it, some peas, corn, a bit of ketchup, barbecue sauce. If I'm trying to gain weight, hit the scales up, then yeah, some some veggie proteins on there. Um, but for me, this is absolute delicacy, absolute delicacy. This is my, f and that makes me feel so clean and pure afterwards or the next day, etc. I love this stuff. But again, I understand a lot of people don't want it, you know, and I get that. That's totally fine. But I love, I love Jesse, Jesse's honesty. If I can say it for the hundredth time, I love the honesty these guys saying here. It's fantastic, Jesse. Keep it up. Mixed in, then I'd probably eat it. But as it is here, it's a bit. Ugh. Alright, so he's going to get into, just to wrap this up, he's going to get into his dinner. Chance, even his wife's overweight. I did the uh, bottle of lemonade, I forgot to add that. This is some Coles Australia, it's full sugar. And, uh... Just a quick note, with, with soft drinks, they are bad for your teeth because they contain phosphoric acid and or carbonic acid. Sugar is pH neutral, so if you are worried about teeth, minimise carbohydrate, carbohydrate, uh, carbonated beverages okay the carbs are fine but the the ph of these sports drinks and sodas can be very acidic so be careful of that but t sugar itself table sugar is ph neutral and uh, artificial colors flavors uh meatball it was like, where's my pizza lemonade mate so there's good sugar content there's no no fake stuff in there sugar wise it is 12 grams of sugar per 100 so 180. You can see the food acids in there. We've got food acid 330, I think citric acid 331 and 296. So we've got three types of acids in the beverages there. But sugar gets the wrap, doesn't it? Sugar gets the wrap, but it's the it's acids that are added to it. And 50 grams. So, so 30 times 5, 150 grams of sugar. As I said, again, just to reiterate, I've explained the reason why this can work. There's, this isn't going to make him fat or give him diabetes if he's sticking to this diet. The problems I have with this, firstly, again, if you're drinking like sculling, if you're just chugging bottles of lemonade, you're really locking yourself in in terms of your fat intake. You can't up your fat intake if you're drinking this stuff because you will gain weight. So that's... Again, Jesse, this is where this is where I disagree with you and I think you will see it, is that you, you're going to gain the fat anyway. You know, Like I said, it, if I'm eating 1,000 1, grams of carbs a day and 100 grams of fat, I'm still storing that 100 grams of fat. If I'm eating zero carb a day and I'm eating 100 grams of fat a day, I'm still storing that fat. The fat's still getting stored. Whether or not we burn it off, that fat, that's another story. So the fat's always getting stored, regardless of what else is going on in that diet. The fat's getting stored. That's what I don't like. Um, and then you're starting to get to the point of, I know I have said in other videos, I'm a fan of 
always going a little bit above. So trying to overfuel, getting slightly more carbohydrates while you're training than you need. But I mean, drinking bottles of lemonade at night, does he need this amount? I always say go with your cravings. If you crave it, go with it and keep it low fat. Like if I'm craving a sweet drink, you know, I'll have sugar and water, maybe a little bit of lemon in there, make my own lemonade. Uh, if you crave, that's, there you go. If How much is too much? If you don't crave it, don't eat it, you know. Um, or if it tastes bad, don't eat it. Like if, when I'm eating my rice at night time, you know, I'm all, I always make extra rice. You know, I'll eat it, give it to the birds next day or I'll eat it the next day. I'll always make more rice than I need in that one sitting just in case, because it's better to have more than you need than not enough and go to bed hungry or just be under carb and less productive the next day or, you know, sex next morning isn't a good next day because your dong ain't as strong. So I always make more rice than I need, you know. Um, you know, and so then when you're eating that rice, when you're, te- when you're done, you're done. With the sugar, you're done, you're done. You can't eat more sugar than you need. You can't eat more rice, r- rice or fruit than you need. Sweet fruit. Oh, no, do not. I can. I've got a binge eating disorder. It's like, no, dude, you think you do, but you don't. You just, you, you, just, you know what I mean? Like, most nutritionists in the world would say, that's too much rice. That's too much fruit. That's too much sugar. Most would say that. Most most cycling team nutritionists would look at my diet and go, that's too much carbohydrate. And most of those nutritionists are fat. Most of those nutritionists are fat. And pretty much all those nutritionists aren't doing, couldn't do a 300k ride or go actually train with the riders like I could do. You know what I mean? Oh, you're burning the car. No, 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 no. Come on. It's like to be able to do that, you need to have the fuel in first. Okay? You, your body limits the carbohydrate by your taste. It limits it. It's like wattages. You can't do more watts than you can put out. I can't say, yeah, I'm going to go and do 500 watts for uh, the next hour. I'm, hey, guys, I'm going, to, I'm going to jump in the front of this climb. I'm going, to, I'm going to sit on 500 watts until there's no one left. I'll be no one left after like a minute or two minutes max, you know what I mean? So, like, you can't, it's like, I can eat too much carbon. No, you can't. It's like saying you can do much, too much power for forever. Oh, I've got to cut the carbs, man, because I just eat too much carbs. I've got, I've got to cut the power, man, because I'll just sit on the front, 500, 600, 700 watts, you know, you know. <laughs> I have to shoot my carbs, man, because you eat too much. So, like, dude, you're tripping, 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 people, tripping, people. The body will limit the carbohydrate intake. A lot of people have an eating disorder and they don't want to believe that to be true, so they want to restrict, restrict, restrict. They think, oh, if I just live myself, eat as much as I want, I'll just become a fat pig. And it's like, do I look like a fat pig? You know, Jesse's showing you videos from eight years ago. Is that right? So, it's, third, it's 2014, it's 13. It's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's eight years ago, man. And I'm still looking like a scrawny twig. Overeating on carbohydrates, under training. People all go, Juno, when are you going to do some training again? You're just like, you're lazy. You know, so people say, Juno, you don't train enough. Give us something, something inspiring. And then people over here are like, Juno, you eat too much carbohydrates. Oh, Juno, and you're too skinny. Oh, you, you do steroids? You don't look like you do steroids. You still look like a twig. You know what I mean? And it's not genetic because obesity runs in my family. It's nutritional people. The body will limit carbohydrate just like the body will limit power production. I don't know. It doesn't seem like, I mean, what? he's not training that much. I'm not sure if like all this, I kind of get the sentiment, the high carbohydrate thing, but it does seem excessive. I mean, does he need this? I mean, if this was me, I'd probably say skip the, skip the soft drink, have... If 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 you if you if someone pours you a glass of lemonade or you know full sugar drink that you like, and they pour it and say, "Hey, do you want one?" If your brain's going, "Oh, no, 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 I'm I'm done, I'm done," if your brain's going, "Oh man, oh, I would love a tall glass of chilled drink right now," yes, please. Then you need the drink. If someone stirs you up a low fat, if someone stirs you up a low fat vegan stir fry at night time, full of white rice, all the foods I would eat. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm like, oh, man, I really appreciate it, I'll save it for tomorrow because right now, man, I know I'll enjoy that food tomorrow, but right now my taste buds are turned off for the night. I can't eat anything. I've got no taste in my mouth. Done. That's called the allosthetic taste change where I'm just done. But I know that I can imagine that's going to taste really good. Don't throw it out. I'll eat it tomorrow. You know what I mean? That's when you know you're done. When You know what I mean? It's like sex. It's like... You can't, I can't, you know, like, as, as a guy, you know, like, once you're done, you're done. You know, your prolactin kicks in, you need to, you've got that refractory period, you need to be a breather, you know what I mean? 
You need to, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like guys go, oh, no, oh, I, got a cur- I, could, I could go like 50 times in a day, you know. It's like, no, you can't, bro. No, you can't. So it's the same with carbohydrate. Your body will limit it. Your body will limit it, 100%. Have water or something and then have, have a bit of dessert. Um, have something taste a bit nicer. That's probably what I'd do. You probably get the same amount of calories in, probably be a bit higher fat, a bit lower in carbs, but I would prefer to have that as a dessert. So it's just... Yeah, I, I do think, so even if this does work scientifically in terms of performance and weight loss, it's not how I would want to spend my calories in the day. So to summarize there, that's why it works for him. And I would say pick up the- It works for everyone if someone wants to do it. If they don't want to do it, that's cool. That's fine. Good bits from that. The things that I'm getting from that is the fueling, the hydration, things like that. Is that a diet I would want to eat personally? Not really. But that's not to say that that diet doesn't work. It's obviously working for him. So I take the learnings out of that for the things I like and apply them to how I want to eat my diet. And that's how you can end up with a diet that works for you is by incorporating the good bits you've learned, but then doing it in a way that suits how you like to eat and how you want to live. So I'll end the video there, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Do you have a- that's a, <laughs> what's his Napoleon Dynamite? That's a great video, Jesse. I appreciate that. Um, I just want to, Let's go back. Can we go back? Let's pause this video. He had rim brakes in the background. Actually, I think you already saw that anyway. There's a rim brake bike in the background, a devil, devil bike, revel bike, uh, rim brakes for the win. Um, what more can I say? If we want, we'll do a follow-up video of this one. If you've got any, got any questions down below, hit us up. Appreciate Jesse with his transparency and, and making a really civil, unbiased, objective video sharing his opinion. Appreciate that. Even if people disagree with me or call me a douchebag, that's all good. Um, that's what it's about. Community. People can give and take ideas and stuff like that. So I love that. My blood tests speak for themselves. People, my performance for someone my age and I'm not a natural athlete in terms of a uh, natural athlete. In terms of like gifted athlete, I was the kid at school who was, you know, dead last on sports day and cross country running. I'd do it because no one else wanted to do it and I could get some significance there in my school because no one else really cared about it. But I'd go to, I'd go to the inter schools across country and you literally finish dead last. I come home. Mum's like, "How'd you go? How'd you go? Did you win?" And I was like, "Oh, do I get? Is there a prize for last place? I won that. You know what I mean? But as an eight-year-old, twelve-year-old, I was devastated. You know, <laughs> mum would buy me these like ASIC shoes, and um, because you're single mum on a tight budget, so I got these ASIC shoes. And I got these special shoes. Hopefully, I win today, and just got smashed. I remember my first inner school cross country. I think it was in Kilcoy. Was it Kenilworth? Queensland and just getting absolutely smashed on the first climb and I was just like so embarrassed I was literally you know it's like it was like a bunch of rabbits with a turtle you know like everyone starts together and you can't find the turtle and and then the the gun goes off and the rabbits just go and I'm the turtle going up the hill (laughs) then all the parents looking at me like what's this kid even doing here you know it's all the private school I was was from a public school and it's like get this poor kid out of this this is an embarrassment you know like and people were just looking at me like they'd turn their back and stuff. And I was just like doing this run of shame. Um, and that, that was really, really interesting. Uh, so I guess that, that made me a little bit obsessed with performance enhancement. And obviously understanding about drugs and stuff like that. Not wanting to go in that path. Just looking at nutrition. And obviously as a 12-year-old kid, you got no idea about Olympic athletes using drugs, etc. You just like have no idea about that. So when I got more into bike racing, I was always natty. And, um, and then started using performance enhancing drugs is like testosterone in 2014 for personal reasons like you know journalistic curiosity reasons and um just to see what the hoo-ha was about and i can say that yeah these things definitely work but i'm not as fast as i used to be because the extra you know 20 odd kilos of muscle doesn't really help sprints better but my climbing etc not so much anyway that's the video uh, that's where i'm coming from uh, and i've trained thousands of people the last 25 years and uh, yeah, anyone out there, whether they're Tour de France winner or not, I can definitely help them with their performance, 100%. But understanding, not many people want to do these basic nutritional things. And, and that's okay. But uh, it's great to see uh, people sharing their opinion on that one. Anyway, that's the wrap. I've rambled on long enough. Carbs for the win. End of the day, man. The quality of life is in proportion to the quality of your communication. And your communication skills, your confidence hinge on your muscle glycogen. It's very hard to be confident and communicate well with state control if our muscle glycogen is insufficient for our individual needs as humans wanting to live the best life and be the best presence we can for people. Don't be hangry. All right? Eat carb before you're hangry, people.
Gobdefucker.